If you've ever attended one of my classes, you'll know how big of a fan of templates I am. In this Wise All Short, we're going to show you the five top reasons that you should be using Power BI templates more. Number one, safe saving. We've all done it. We've opened up one of our nice reports and we thought, you know what, I just want to do a couple of tweaks. We've deleted something, we've moved some stuff around, and then we've hit the dreaded control S. And it's only after that little cog has stopped spinning that you realise what you've done. No undo button's going to save you. Your original template, your original copy, now corrupted. So what can we do about this? Well, this is one of the reasons that I personally like templates. If you go up to File and down to Export and create yourself a Power BI template, it'll ask for a description, doesn't really matter at this point. And this is where it matters. Notice the file type, PBIT, not a PBIX, not your standard file, but instead this PBIT. Well, I'm going to save this. And then I'm going to close down my report. Let's say I now want to come in and edit that report. Instead of opening up the PBIX file, I'm going to open up the PBIT file. Instead of opening up the PBIT file, it launches a brand new PBIX. It loads in all the data, it populates all the visuals, meaning for all intents and purposes, you've just got a copy of the report you created. But most importantly, notice the name up the top, Untitled. And when I click on the floppy disk or Control S for my quick save, it launches the Save As window, not the Save window. I'm saving a new PBIX file meaning there is no risk of me accidentally overwriting my original template. Number two, perfect parameters. One of the most time consuming things when you want to create a new report is changing the filters on the existing report. Maybe the files have moved, maybe you'd like to remove some data. Whatever the reason, this is one of the great things that work with templates. I can go into the transform data section I can go into the query editor and under my home tab, I have manage parameters. There's several different types of parameters that I can set up. I can set up input parameters where someone can freely type text. I can set up drop downs where I type in the values I'm interested in and I can set up query drop downs where a query runs, pulls back the data and then creates my drop down. All of these are going to feed into filtering my data when I open the report. All I need to do is export this report. I'm going to give them an instruction. Please complete these questions. Click OK. And then this save this onto my desktop. Once that's done, close down your report and open up your brand new PBIT file. And you'll see your parameter, the first thing it does is using those existing connectors, tries to pull data through. But wait, parameters mean that instead of loading the data directly, it's waiting for our response. I can put in things like the file location the minimum number of units I'm interested in. I can use my pre-built drop-down to choose what the lowest sale is that I'm willing to see. And I can run another query to pull back all the regions that are available to me. And then I can load the data. At the very bare minimum, the best parameter to include is your file location parameters because then you don't need to worry about, oh, where did my file go and needing to update this. If I want to update it again, I can go back up to transform data and choose edit parameters and give this a tweak. 
So instead of seeing London, I would like to see the North. Click OK. Click Apply Changes. My data reloads and I've got my new report. Number three, collaborative query editor. One thing that you might find difficult to do is collaborate together on the query editor. When you're sending the files between each other, all of the data that's included is sent along with it. This can actually be a bad thing, especially if you both have access to the same data. Why send data that the other person already has? If I export this as a template, it's going to generate the exact file with everything in it apart from the data. Connectors, measures, bookmarks, visuals, they're all in there. I can give this a save. And I can now send that file along with all the data that it has in it to my colleagues. Now this is a relatively small data model, so the size difference isn't as big as it could be, but it's still half, and it's still small enough that I can attach it to any email. My colleague can rerun this, edit the query editor, and then send it back to me to use. Of course, if you have a pro license, consider using app workspaces in Power BI service and create a data flow which is effectively the same thing, but without having to pass PBIT files back and forth. Number four, formatting libraries. One thing that you may or may not know about Power BI, I can take these and I can copy them into any of my other reports. If the columns exist, then fantastic. You just paste it in and you're good to go. But even if the columns don't exist, you can still use this technique. Paste it in. Yes, you'll end up with an error message. Before you remove the errored columns though, go in and replace them. So here, I don't have the gross income anymore, so I'm gonna replace it with the sum of quantity. Then I don't have the tax period anymore, so I'm gonna replace that with my calendar year. And you'll see all the formatting I did is still available. So use your reports to create these reservoirs, these templates. You could even do it from an entire page. If I wanted to take everything on this page onto a new report, the easiest way to do it is on the View tab, choose the Selection pane, and just copy absolutely everything. I could then go to my new report, open a new page, Control v and I've just copied the entire report page across. Number five, bookmarks and navigation. The final one is the real reason that I want you to use templates. I see so often on courses or after courses, people repeating steps that really shouldn't be repeated. Take this report for example. Each of these buttons will eventually lead to a specific page that has information on it, and I'll change the text to the name of those pages. But for now, what I've done is created four pages all set up and good to go. And each of my buttons are still linked. I still go through to that page. Similar idea with my page navigation buttons. I've set these all up so that I go to each page. Little things, but setting this up on multiple pages can take up to 20 or 30 minutes to do if you have 10 pages. But the other one, and this really is the major one. With Power BI reports, we have really limited space. You're going to be using bookmarks a lot to hide and unhide visuals. Take here, for example. We have tables about the towns and regions in the UK. If I click on swap to maps, it changes the visibility and swaps the maps to visible. Now you may be thinking, big whoop, Sam, you've gone to all that effort. What does this have to do with templates? Well, user, I'm glad you asked. If I launch a template that has all of those features in it, and for this template, what I did is I deleted all of the data. So I just went in and deleted every single query. 
Yes, everything appears to be broken, and it seems like I've wasted my time hugely, but all of my action buttons and all of my page navigation buttons are all still working. But more importantly, my buttons to swap my visuals still work. I can still swap between them. And this isn't fixed to either the data or the visual. If you remember these were tables a second ago, well, I can go in here and I can say, do you know what? Instead of tables, I want them to be bar charts. The only thing you're changing is the visibility. It doesn't matter what the data is and it doesn't matter what the visual type is. So stop wasting your time repeating things. Create yourself some templates. I hope you've enjoyed this wise owl short and put down in the comments if I've convinced you that maybe templates are the way forward. Otherwise, I'll see you next time.